Hey guys, next up in the Paper Dream a printable mini album templates series is the Tall Envelope album, which is on page nine, and it's this one right here. There's a tall envelope, and then there's a small uh, pocket or it could be a flap or whatever. So I printed it out onto craft cardstock, and this cardstock is from Recollections. Um, just their regular craft 65 pound cardstock. And if you want to make the exact same album as me, I printed out four of these tall envelope um, pages, page number nine, four of page number nine. And then just like we did with the square envelope album, you have to make your covers first because it's the same concept where you cannot put the envelope together until it is attached to the binding piece, okay? What I did was, I've already prepped it, and we're going to do a little bit different this time. Um, I've already made the main part of the album, which is the covers are on page 53. Let's see here. I might have knocked that tab off. No, there it is. So here's the covers right here. So you're going to need to cut two of these, you know, trace it out onto chipboard. Um, this is just, um, what kind of chipboard is this? This is like a medium weight. I'll try to put a link below, which I'll also put a link to this video below too. Um, I'll try to put a link below to the chipboard, um, just so if you want to get some, you can. Uh, so anyway, so you need two of these, and then I'm going to do two pages, um, and I'm going to use the half an inch. So that is this one right here. So the spine is the half an inch, um, two pages for the tall envelope, okay? So then you're going to need two of these out of chipboard. So you lay it down, trace it out, cut it out. So you're going to need two of these. And then I'm going to do a flap that comes over, kind of make like a box kind of thing. So I took this one, which is the half an inch for four pages um, for the portrait. And I cut a piece of this out in the chipboard, and it is right here. So I'm going to use this to um, act as a, a flap, okay? So I've already put this part together, the main part of the covers, um, and it's just like the way we did this album, how we just um, used the black chipboard and then wrapped the edges to add the spot. I'll link this video below too so you can see exactly how I did it. So I've already done that part and I've already attached my binding piece to the center there, okay? Oh, I also want to tell you, we're going to be using the romance novel paper line. Uh, this is by Prima, and it was designed by Marion Smith, and it's one of my favorites. I even have some stuff left over from the original series, you know, the, reg the original collection, so maybe I'll use some of that in this album as well. So here we are at this part. So remember we cut an extra one of these, and then we cut this piece here. So what I've already also cut all the pieces to attach these. They're the same exact way I did the spine over here. So they're all the same um, width, and I think it ended up being like three inches by the same height as the cover. So what you want to do is first you want to um, put tape or glue. This one won't, this does not have um, to hold on to the pages, so you may not have to use score tape. Um, if I was to choose another glue, it would be Fabri-Tac by Beacon. But I'm going to use this quarter of an inch score tape here. I can find the end. And I will try to link all the stuff that I use um, below so that if you wanted to check it out, you could. Um, so anyway, so you since you don't have to... Um, this piece doesn't have to hold the pages in. You can literally just put a few pieces in. No big deal. I am going to, you don't have to cover the whole thing is what I'm trying to say. Okay. These are Tim Holtz scissors. Um, these are great for cutting through things like this because um, it's a non-stick surface or something. I forget what exactly it's called. but So you want to put this on both sides. So I got tape on both sides. And then you want to take one of these pieces and you want to put tape on each edge here, the long edge. 
just like that. And you want to do that to two pieces. Oops, I almost did the wrong edge. Just on one side. Both long edges on one side of the paper. Okay. And then you also want to take your covers and flip it over upside down and run tape along one edge, uh, one long edge of your covers. So since there's no direction in this, I'm basically just picking, okay, um, this is going to be the top of my book and this is going to be the bottom of my book. So what you want to do is, the first thing you want to do is attach this piece here, the spine piece, to that piece, to the piece you cut out to um, attach it all together. And then if you want to, you can use just a regular old glue stick. Doesn't matter what type of glue stick it is. I wouldn't use anything expensive. You just need, the only reason you do that is to give yourself a little wiggle room. And all you want to do is like center it. You want it to be even on top and bottom, but you want to just kind of center it in the middle here. And that'll work. And if it's not perfect, that's fine. No worries. So then what you want to do is you want to take one edge off, the backing of, of the tape of one edge, and you want to flip this sucker back over and take the tape off of this one, or the backing off of this one. I'm going to use my glue stick. Then I'm going to flip everything around because it's easier for me to line things up this way. So I'm going to leave a little over an eighth of an inch gap there so that it'll fold nicely. I'm trying to get it even on top and bottom best I can. Like that. Awesome. Oh, and then let me put some tape. This is that other piece that's going to go on top here. So I need to put some tape along one side of it as well. Take the backing off of that. Take the backing off of this. Oh, and then put some glue stick. Alright, same thing. Eighth of an inch. And you kind of want to make sure you get them even top and bottom. Or where it's matching top and bottom. Just like that. Oh, see, look, it's a little off. But I think I can just take my scissors and trim it. Or I could use a craft knife and trim it too. I don't think it's crucial. Yeah. So now we got something that looks like this. So then what you want to do is, oh, I cut too many pieces of these. Oh well. Uh, you want to take the tape backing off of everything now. And you want to add a little bit of glue stick. Again, you don't have to. Um, I just find it very useful. <laughs> okay, so then you just want to line it up at the bottom there. You want to kind of evenly distribute the extra hangover on each side. And it should fit pretty good. Oh, and I have a little bit. I guess I cut a piece just a little too long. A couple pieces just a little too long. How am I going to? I can't really get up under there. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now, once you've got something that looks like this, then you want to take your bone folder and just gently... Bend at those uh, joints there. Gently press and bend. Uh-oh. Did you see what just happened? It's the glue stick is giving it just a little too much time because it came up. So you want to just gently bend and gently bend. So in the end, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Okay, it's a box. Really, <laughs> it's almost a box. Okay, so you just want to keep 
working it until it bends really nicely. And since you've left so much of a gap there, you should have no problems with tearing and it should bend as much as you want it to. So there we go. So now I'm going to take my Ranger Archival ink and coffee and I'm going to ink the whole thing front and back and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I've got it inked up both inside and out and the mats for this album I'm going to be using black because I think it looks really pretty with the romance novel uh, paper line and um, the mat for this envelope, the covers for this envelope album is the actual envelope itself. So what I did um, was I printed another one out just on white cardstock and I'm going to write on here that it's page nine and then I'm going to trim these pieces out but the only one I really need is this one right here. Okay so I got my Fiskars um, precision heavy duty whatever rotary paper trimmer <laughs> out and I'm literally just going to trim the entire thing out and cut it to pieces. If you are interested in this paper trimmer or checking this paper trimmer out, I did find them pretty cheap. I will put a link to that in the description box below. I'll try to link anything that I use. I think I've said that already, but sometimes I just can't. So you literally want to cut it all to pieces. Okay, so this is the actual envelope itself. So it is the mat for the cover. So I need one, two, three, four of those. And then I'm going to use um, the spine pieces, the template for the spine pieces to cut the mats for the rest of them. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've showed you before, but I will show you again. So let's see, what would be the best way to do this? I think I'll do it this way. Where's my pencil? Just using a regular old pencil. I'm gonna trace it out. Alrighty, I got my paper trimmer back out. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is, since I know the whole album is the same height, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this whole strip um, to be the same height before I trim out that piece there. That way I've got all this so that I could use that for my spine pieces. I just need to make sure I keep it separated. And remember you want to cut like right on the inside of your pencil line. That way it is um, the correct size. So I'm going to cut all these out. Alright, so I've got the spine pieces back out and I'm going to need two of this larger one. Um, I'm probably going to have to take a smidge off, but this is how I do it because I didn't provide you mats for the spines. I don't know why. I've got mats for everything else. Um, so I got this one, so I need two of those, and then I need three of these of this size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it on here. I'm going to find a straight edge there. And it's obviously going to be longer than the paper that we already cut. Um, and I'm just going to draw one. And I'm going to scoot it over. Notice I took the sticky part and put it um, facing up so that it didn't tear the paper. I need three of these, right? I'm not going to have enough. Hmm. When I trace them out, I go right on top of that pencil line with the template. So then what you want to do when you cut it is you want to go right on top of that pencil line. Um, so it'll be right. Cut that edge off. So I'm just literally going to line that pencil line up right down the middle there, even though I didn't trace that one out very good. All right, so the next thing I'm going to check is to see if they're going to fit. So there's the bigger one. Um, okay, so it's too big. So I think I'm just going to take a smidge off. Uh, maybe take a little under an eighth of an inch first. 
and then check it again. Because you know when you leave that space for the bending of the of the spines and stuff, it adds a little bit to it. So I think that looks pretty good. And so let's check the other ones. Um I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave that because this little, you know, the little dent there is kind of the eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna leave these the way they are. Let me check the outside spine here. Oh, I may trim off one just for the outside spine. So I'm gonna do one for the outside spine. Just a smidge. When they're tiny pieces like that, these these are they get a little bit harder to handle. But I'm gonna try. Okay. So I need to make sure I keep that separated because it's the outside spine piece. Okay, so let's attach them real quick. I'm gonna use my fabric tack from Beacon and I'm gonna start on the outside. I'll flip it over and I'm gonna get one of these pieces. I'm gonna make sure the pencil line's on one side. I got me a new bottle of fabric tack and I have to tell you, look, I almost throw it down. I didn't cut the tip off because it kind of, you can't see it, but it's kind of split. I need to cut it because look at how it did with the glue. It didn't go on there very well, but I'm not going to worry about it. Let me just go ahead and cut it right now before I forget. I've had people ask me, their fiber tack doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. There is a little, you know, you open this part up. There is usually either a foil thing inside the lid or a foil thing on top of the bottle. Plus, you have to cut the tip off. So if yours isn't coming out, that's what you need to do. All right, so here's my spine piece, my special spine piece that I cut. There we go, that's better. And let's put that on there right there. Oh, I'm, le I'm leaking. I'm leaking! It's seeping out. All right. Maybe I won't get so close to the edge. You could use a tape runner for this, a glue stick. You could use um, Aileen's uh, tacky glue. Use whatever you have. And use whatever's your favorite. These just happen to be my favorite. Okay. Oh, am I going to have to do this outside spine one too? Uh, so yeah, I should have trimmed two of them off and just left one not trimmed. And then, um, that's not the piece. Did I, uh, I only trimmed one of these off too. Oh, for crying out loud. Now let's try this again. I don't know what kind of closure I want to do yet. Might just do something simple like a magnet. Or maybe two. I might have to use two. I don't know. All right, and now I'm going to do the inside just the same way. Okay, I think I figured out my closure. I haven't done one of these, I do not think, on YouTube at all, ever. Um, instead of using magnets or Velcro uh, closures, I think I'm going to use these closure handles. These are spare parts. I got them a long, long, long time ago. Paper Studio, um, Hobby Lobby. So I think I'm going to use a set of these, except I think I'm going to use it upside down so it flips this way. So, in order to attach these, I first have to add my paper to the covers. Just the top, just the front, that you're, you know, the, the top. Yeah, the top. So, you know, the, the covers, the, the mat, the secondary mat for the covers is the actual envelope. Well then, the traceable template part, the top part of the 
um, cover mat is the actual secondary mat of the envelope. So that's what this is. And that is on page 25. So see how it mats the envelope perfectly? Well, it also mats, you know, the cover as well. Oops. So, oops, they're coming apart. And that's the actual traceable template for the envelope. Um, I hope I'm not being too confusing. Most of you who have been using the Paper Dream know exactly what I'm talking about. So, like I told you, I'm going to be using the romance novel. So, what I'm going to do is I already picked out my papers. And all you have to do is take that secondary mat... Oh, I'm going to use this one and then the type. So, just lay it down right where you want it on your 6x6 or whatever paper pad you're using. I really need to sharpen my pencil. Good grief. And then just trace out around it. And then just trim it out. This is so my favorite paper line. Just like that. So I've already cut out the top part for the spine. I mean for the top flap. I just did it the same way I did the uh, black mat. I just kept fiddling with it until, you know, it fit right. <laughs> so it's going to look like this. And then I'm going to put the same paper on the very back cover. So I'm going to go ahead and cut another one out. I'm going to ink them all up, and won't that be cute? And I'll be right back. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. I like it. So now I need to figure out how to use these things. So I'll be right back. Okay, here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and fold this together the way it's supposed to be, I think. And I'm just going to clip it together for now. So this way I can lay this on here. Okay, so now I just need to figure out where I want to place it. And I want to try to go in the middle, or at least darn, darn near close. All right, I'm going to have to take it apart. All right, I'm going to try really carefully to mark this with a Sharpie. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, that might be a little crooked. This sounds about right. So, mark that, and now I need to put it back together. Oh, let me leave that open. Now I need to put it back together. Oh, you know what I should do? I bet you I should go ahead and attach that one down. I don't know. I've never made one. I've never used one of these before. So, I think what I'm going to do, since I, can, I can't reach, I do have that tool that you can, the big crocodile that you can, um, reach all the way in, but I'm just going to use my pokey tool and my fun foam pad that I got under here, and I'm just, whoa, <laughs> went through better than I thought it would. I'm just going to poke through here, just like that, and then it comes with these really long brads, which I'm not sure why it needs to be so long, but okay. And since I haven't done the inside, you know, lined it with the secondary mat yet, everything is good to go. I wonder if I should have put glue down there. No, I'm not going to, just in case I need to take it off. Okay. Okay. Let me get my marker ready. 
then I'm just going to stick that in there. I hope this works because it'll be so cute. And I'm just going to mark it with my Sharpie. Alrighty. And I'm going to do the same thing with my pokey tool. Okay. Cross your fingers and hope that it worked. Hope that I did it right. Oh, so cute. That is so cute. Did I do it right or is it crooked? Even if it is crooked, who cares? It's super cute. I like it. I really like that. So that's how you open it. Oh, thumbs up for that. Sweet. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Bye.